Hello once again my friends and my faithful followers on YouTube. It's a very interesting time that we live in. I normally put my videos on Sunday and last week I spoke about how things are changing so so quickly where Islam took a foothold first, which is the Arabian Peninsula, primarily Saudi Arabia. Sure enough, the next day, on Monday morning, I read on the news that Saudi Arabia, the, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, have decided to uproot all principles of the Muslim Brotherhood from the educational system. This is a very interesting development. We'll get to it later. However, in the beginning of my video, because actually I really don't have time to uh, type and write to each and every person the answer of his or her question, I decided to write them down and I will answer them in the beginning of the video. Okay, we have a question from uh, a person, his or her, the name is Still uh, Glotten. I hope I'm pronouncing the, the name correctly. Okay, he, he or she is interested to know how I got to become the way I am now, which practically I mean, I think what he means is totally opposite of um, a regular Muslim person who will become militant and go and bomb himself and kill others. This question really is very hard to answer and I would say the reason is it is very hard to know your good point for this is I think for every human being it is very hard for you yourself to know your good points and your weak your weak points however I, I would say for me I was more and I hope I'm correct here I think I was more interested in justice and what is right since I was a child and when you look around and you see injustice and you see uh, problems all over then you come to the point to question what is it all about is is there a God and is there why are we the way we are and you dig deep, at least that was my situation, to the human suffering and the source and the cause of it. Uh, <clears throat> and because I, I felt uh, killing another person will never solve a problem. People have been killing one another since the beginning of time and until now we did not solve our problems but we can or at least myself I can see the problem in the Islamic ideology because I was raised up in that culture and that does not mean other ideologies or even other religions uh, don't have problems they do and we have to be realistic I hope that answer your question. If you have any more comments or you want to ask something else, I'll be more than happy to answer you. Okay, there is a person by name Kunlu, and there are three questions. Number one, who can control the Muslims in Britain, Germany, France, all the European countries who are I think the question is they are going rampant now and they are killing people. 
okay this is a problem and I believe in the existence of the deep state and the deep state to control Europe and America and any free nation they have to introduce element that can cause chaos and I believe that the chaotic situation in the Middle East was designed yes I, I mean it designed by the deep state to have immigrant migrate from this region indiscriminately meaning innocent as well as the criminals the militant Muslims in introducing them into Europe keeping them like uh, cells for the future in case the deep state decides and the deep state will decide one day to reduce population and to do that they can use these militant because these militant are willing to die they don't need to be brainwashed uh, to encourage them to kill innocent people they are already into Muslim people are already in that frame of mind they can kill anybody all right they can kill their fathers their mothers if they are not on the same uh, page with them so now Europe is in a big mess this I understand but it's honestly the problem of European people whether it's Germany France uh, Britain uh, Sweden so uh, I'm really sorry that it, it is a difficult situation but it is what it is it is now a European problem and you have to find a way to deal with it either deprogram these militant people I don't know I really cannot answer for each country what they should do send them back I don't know each country has to decide according to to its own interest and situation okay but the leaders of some European countries purposefully let these people in and they know the chaos that will ensue and they allowed that okay the second question would Saudi Arabia use the army against their own people That's not only Saudi Arabia. All governments to keep power, to keep grip on the control of the country and the people, especially totalitarian countries, yes, they will kill their own people. You may find this is strange, but yes, they will kill their own people. And they will kill their neighboring country. Uh, but in my opinion, in my own personal opinion, I think these weapons are both not necessarily. However, I mean, they could use it against their own people, but I think primarily they bought these arms to confront Iran first, and Qatar, the small country in the Gulf region, secondary. So it's primarily for Iran, which is primarily Shiite Muslim, who hate the Sunni Muslim, Saudi Arabia, primarily Sunni Muslim, and Iran is primarily Shiite Muslim. They are, all, they are both Muslims, but they have different concept of the religion 
you have to study about that and if you have a question about Sunni and Shiat maybe I can address that later on the third and the final question <clears throat> why the Muslim judge the women but do not but they do not judge their own hearts I think also you mean they don't judge the man to answer this question this is actually not only Muslim problem to be uh, sincere and not biased this is a human race problem I will give you an example uh, if you are let's say you are a Christian I don't know what you believe in but that's not the issue but if I say you are a Christian person you must have read the Bible and you came to uh, the situation when the, the Jewish people brought uh, an adulterous woman to Jesus and they told him she was caught in the act what to do with her And my question here, we really read this story and we go over it and we never ask this woman was committing adultery. A person who commits adultery, adult, adulterous relationship takes two people, more than one person. And nobody ask, nobody ask where is the man that she was committing adultery with why they did not bring the man why did not why they did not judge the man they wanted her to be stoned but she was committing adultery with another person where was the other person the other person was a man and it's not man's problem the judgment from beginning of time fell on the woman so I, I it's not like I'm bashing Islam and whatever I blame Muslim or Islam no uh, let's put things in its proper perspective and understand that this is uh, a universal problem not just Muslim and if you are talking about judge their own hearts as collective man and woman I think this is also a, a universal problem because we tend to judge others but we really don't see uh, ourselves it's easy to see other people's mistakes but very difficult to see our own mistakes and that is probably why uh, they take it on somebody else it happened to be the weaker part of a human being is the woman so they take it on the woman or the child uh, I hope that answered the questions that uh, have been asked now we go to the title of today uh, video which is <coughs> The countdown for the end and the disappearing the disappearance of Islam. Do I want Islam to disappear? Yes. I say it blank clear. And when I started this channel and these videos, I did not think I will have many friends but I will make enemies my intention is not to make enemies my intention is to say what's going on if people won't declare themselves my enemies go ahead that's your business I cannot control you or control what you think so I get many people even from my own family now they are raising red flags what are you doing okay as I said after I put post uh, after I posted the last video on Sunday on Monday 
the crown prince of Saudi Arabia is declaring that he is going to get rid of all the brotherhood teaching system in Saudi Arabia. For a Muslim person, should he or she should be very, very alarmed at this point. And the reason is, let's say, go to a, a system like communist system. It started in Russia in 1917. Marxism, Leninism took roots. That was the birthplace of this ideology. Once, once this foundation cracked in the 1989, once uh, this ideology cracked in its own foundation, in it is birthplace. It was born in Russia and it cracked, the foundation cracked in Russia. Communism at this point was to collapse. Okay, but there was a countdown started before the collapse of communism. Many people were opposing communism and they were actually speaking out to encourage the people inside the Soviet Union to abandon this teaching and this ideology and it took place in the early 90s it was it started 89 by early 90s it dissolved it was gone the same thing is happening in the Islamic countries and when we look why I say it's the countdown it is the countdown for the end of this ideology. Why do I, why do I say that? Because it started with the Muslim Brotherhood after... The, the Muslim Brotherhood actually, it was founded in Egypt. Okay? And they were defeated four years ago in Egypt when the Muslim Brotherhood president was inaugurated as a president, his name was Mohammed Morsi. And then the people of Egypt came out by the millions, demanding that he should be, he, he should leave the office. He is not fit to serve. Once this happened, this president is now in prison and the foundation of the Muslim Brotherhood cracked in Egypt and I actually mentioned in one of my videos before that once this happened the Muslim Brotherhood will never stand again and therefore once this takes place The end of the Muslim Brotherhood is near. Now, when the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, the birthplace of Islam, declares that he wants to get rid of all the remnants of what took place, because the Muslim Brotherhood spread to each and every Muslim countries. And not only that, they spread even to the West, to Europe and to America to Canada, they're all over, and they are very radical. Their defeat in Egypt, it meant their defeat everywhere. Now, the defeat of the Muslim Brotherhood is one thing, and the defeat of Islam is another. Now, we speak about Saudi Arabia, the birth of Islam, the foundation also there cracked even though it's not declared publicly but the foundation as it cracked in the in Russia and the Soviet Union collapsed and as 
the Muslim Brotherhood's foundation cracked in Egypt, it's doomed to collapse. It's, it's, it is on its way out. Now, this is this declaration by the current prince of Saudi Arabia that he is getting rid of all the teaching of the Muslim Brotherhood in Saudi Arabia. This is the beginning of the end of Islam. Publicly, I'm saying that. And the reason here is, if we take a, a step back and ask ourselves, what is the foundation for the existence of this group, the Muslim Brotherhood? It comes originally from Saudi Arabia, from a person, his name was Muhammad Abdul Wahhab. Wahhabism, you may have heard of the word Wahhabism pertaining to the name Wahhab, Abdul Wahhab, Muhammad Abdul Wahhab, he established something called Wahhabism. And this man, Muhammad Abdul Wahhab, where his roots, where, where he is rooted, he is rooted in the Islamic teaching, in another person, his name, Bin Taymiyyah. And Bin, Bin Taymiyyah, his teaching is rooted in Muhammad. So, it goes vertically down to the root which is Islam and therefore when the crown prince of that same region where Muhammad existed 1400 years ago when the crown prince of this country Muhammad was born in Mecca Mecca, he existed in Mecca. Mecca is now in Saudi Arabia. When the government of Saudi Arabia declares that they want to get rid of the Muslim Brotherhood, he's saying that because actually he cannot directly say we want to get rid of Islam. And the reason is I think this man is very well educated and he is very smart. So you have, in his, I can say whatever I want, but in his position, he cannot say we want to get rid of Islam. So he has to make it gradually, step by step. And last week I spoke that the open cinemas, they allowed women to go to uh, the stadiums to watch sports, all these things they did not exist before he allowed women to drive uh, women do not need uh, a guardian uh, all these things happening so quickly and then last Monday he declares that he wants to get rid of the Muslim Brotherhood's teaching and if you ask yourself what, what is the Muslim Brotherhood's teaching uh, are they Buddhist no they are rooted in traditional Islam, but he cannot say, I'm declaring war on Islam, I want to destroy Islam. But a person like that, he must have studied in the West. I really don't know his history. He must have studied in the West and he came to his senses, Islam is holding us back. Islam didn't contribute anything good to our country. We have to get rid of this one way or another. And therefore, he is taking it one step at a time. Even before I started this channel, none, none of that was happening. I felt within 10 years, within 10 years, Saudi Arabia will be similar to France. Other than that, it will turn like Syria. One or the other. One or the other. It's either total destruction or it will be, in a way, reborn. And it comes out of that stagnant, evil ideology. That might be like a prediction, but it's actually not a prediction. 
if you look at it and you see what happens in history, it's like a formula. If this happened, this will follow. So, even though the Middle East looks so doomed at this point, it looks so, I mean, what's happening in Syria, what's happening in Iraq, what's happening in, uh, even uh, two days ago in Egypt, they killed, uh, they, there, was, there was a bomb that targeted uh, a security, uh, a security guy, killed two people. I hope Egypt does not turn to be like another Syria or Iraq or whatever. Because the, this ideology came as a deceptive ideology and it came with bloodshed. Islam came and caused a lot of bloodshed. So in my own opinion, and I, I hope I'm wrong, I really hope I'm wrong, but in, on its way out, there will also be a lot of bloodshed. That's how I see it. I hope I'm wrong. Thank you very much for uh, following my channel and uh, please subscribe. Have a good day. See you soon.